Now we'll to discuss section four. These are the readings belongs to chapter 15, 16, and 17. Uh, I will start my discussion from derivative. Derivative is a term that is derived from an economic activity that will take place, place in the future. So a derivative is a forward future option or swap contract whose value is derived from an underlying financial asset. In order to understand this forward future, uh, let me give you some examples. If you have a buyer, you have a seller, and you have an underlying asset on which you want to trade, buyer and seller agreed on a certain price, uh, delivery at a certain time, that will be called your uh, forward contract. But if the same contract, you don't know who is the counterparty, and the, issue, the trade will be settled in future, then it will be called as a future contract. We have two very famous options one is call option one is put option when we say call option call option is when I issue some security I tell the public that I can call it back so of course I have to give a higher price for that but against that certain management decisions will be on the back end put option is that the buyer is going to put it on sale in the duration we have two type of options mainly American options and European options Options. The American options are more flexible. You can exercise even before the time, but the European option has to be exercised on a specific time mentioned. Swapping is if you have a one fixed stream of cash flow, you can swap it with another stream of cash flow. This is sometimes we have to do, for example, your turnout is going good and you have created a certain kind of leverage, but now turnout is going down. So you have to swap this fixed uh, stream with another lower cash flow uh, payment stream because you cannot afford to pay that certain amount. So we see different business products options are available to swap. Swap can be for an interest, it can be for um, uh, rates um, and it can be a credit swap. So how we calculate the fixed charge? Uh, we take earning before interest and tax, plus we add lease payments, uh, interest expense minus, plus lease payments. So this is what is the formula. Let's discuss interest rate caps, flooring, caps, flooring, and the colors. Of course, it's easy to understand that we can freeze uh, uh, any activity or security prices in an upper cap and a lower cap. This will help investor not to lose, uh, not to earn too much and not to lose too much. So cap option that puts a max limit and floor is the minimum limit that you're going to assign caller. Caller is a security which combines the purchase of a cap and the sale of a floor to specify a range in which an interest rate will fluctuate. So it's about the range and one is upper and lower limits. We have bid rates, offer rates, spot markets, and forward markets. Spot markets, why we say it's spot, because this is on spot, today rate is a spot rate. Um, rate after 30 days, 60 days is a forward rate. Same way we have bid, or bid rate is an amount and dealer will buy currency, offer rate is the, uh, which is to sell currency. So when we uh, sell, it's an offer, when we buy, it's a bid we give bids to purchase it value at risk is really interesting topic and we saw one report that is originated by JP Morgan long way back that is you want to see one figure of your risk portfolio every day right that's a managing director report so value at risk is a single number estimate how much a company can lose 
due to a price volatility of the instrument it holds. For example, a fixed rate bond or an unhedged currency payable receivable. More precisely, it defines the likelihood of potential loss not exceeding a certain level. So all managing directors want to see a certain level of report that has to be given to them maybe four o'clock uh, in the evening to see that what is one figure uh, risk that is uh, typically called as value at risk. We use statistical models. We define some standard deviation and some confidence intervals that calculations will see in detail later. Uh, we do hedging. Hedging is offsetting your risk against the adverse price changes. We can hedge our um, uncertainties uh, if you feel dollar is going to be expensive in terms of euros you can go we have a lot of uh, treasury products that can hedge offset your risk so we can get a gain or loss as a revenue out of that speculation is using futures or security in order to make a profit based on an expectation so speculations are really common uh, arbitrate is profiting from inefficiencies in marketplace that is purchase stock from one party and immediately selling to another party for a slightly higher price that can only be possible about in the inefficient markets we have forward contracts future contracts any point of time in a trade we can take a long position and we can have a short position it's interesting to understand suppose you have a car you used it for four years now you want to sell because you're fearing that this car may create a trouble in terms of maintenance so you want to take a short position you want you are a seller you are in a short position but you there are a lot of people who cannot afford to buy a new car because it has more taxation so you will prefer to buy a used car used car is cheaper uh, but uh, it has uh, so some people is uh, want to buy a used car and want to take a long position on taking it in their use so in every transaction we have a short position and we have a long position